Hello there, dear viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, I get to present VHS Synthesizer. Now, VHS Synthesizer was made by AudioKit in collaboration with Brian Funk. And if you don't know who that is, then I'll just let Brian introduce himself. Hello, I'm Brian Funk. I'm a musician. I'm a producer. I teach music production. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. I teach at Berkeley Online. I make a lot of sound packs and tutorials. And um, I love doing this and I also do the music production podcast where we have informal conversations about anything related to music. When Audio Kit first kind of was coming out and they were releasing these tools for people to create music apps um, with their toolkit, I got in touch somehow with, with Matt Fetcher and we had a podcast together. We started talking, um, kept in touch and over time I guess, uh, you know, reaching out to each other once in a while he had an idea for this um vhs synths app which i had a whole bunch of samples for because i've done ableton live packs where i recorded synthesizers and instruments to, right to vhs tapes and he wanted to see if i was interested in working with him if i'd supply the samples for that and that's uh that's really my role is i just supplied the samples and some presets now, there are bits and pieces of this interview that I did with Brian spread out throughout the video. And so just keep watching. VHS Synthesizer is kind of like a rompler. So it's based upon a lot of samples, multi-samples. And all of these samples have been recorded with the help of a VCR. So you got that 80s VHS sound baked into all of the patches in here. In his factory state, it's absolutely full with presets, including presets from yours truly. I do hope you enjoy them, but I'm not the only one who made presets. No, if you look at these names here, these are people who provided presets for VHS synth, and many of them are well known within the iOS mobile music community. So if you buy VHS Synthesizer and you end up liking it, make sure you spread out some love for AudioKit, Brian Funk, all of these people making all of these presets. And oh, by the way, when you buy VHS Synth, a portion of that money is also being donated to UNICEF. So it's also for a good cause. So I'm about to walk you through this entire synth so that you can see what it's all about and how it works. But before I do that, I want to show you this clip in where Brian talks about the actual instruments that were sampled. Probably most of the stuff that you can kind of see behind me. Um, I have a Prophet 6. I have um, the Moog Sub Fatty, the Korg MS-20, and the it's a Moog realistic Concertmate MG1, which is sort of like a consumer grade Moog that was sold in Radio Shack, I believe in the 80s. And that synth is really cool because it's like kind of broken. It's got these weird sliders and if you open it up underneath, they put all this foam in there and I guess they didn't foresee these things lasting 30, 40 years. And now the foam like kind of disintegrates and gets in all the faders. So when you slide the filter, it'll do the filtering and it'll have crackling. And then suddenly it'll just turn off and the filter's wide open. And then you move it a little more and the filter's closed. So it's broken, but the way it's broken today is kind of beautiful. Because as you play with the Naji, it all these like glitches and weird sounds that add to the charm of the synth. Maybe 10 years from now, it might be unusable, 
Maybe I'll need to get it fixed or cleaned or something. But right now it's kind of nice. Now, I was kind of curious about the actual setup too, you know, in order to actually get all the sounds into the VHS tape and then back again. But we'll get to that after I walk you through VHS soon. So keep watching. Now VHS synth is absolutely packed full with effects and you'll see that as soon as we start going through this. On the main page you can find the preset browser up here and you can save your own presets by tapping the disk icons here giving it a name and saving it and the little dice here lets you randomly select one of the presets inside of the list. To get out of the preset browser, just tap one of the page buttons, main, more and effects, and I'm going to press on main. Now you also have an about me page where you can read a little bit about the synthesizer and you have some links that you can visit if you want to find out even more about VHS synth. Only this does not work inside the AUV3. You basically have to open these when you've got VHS synth loaded in a standalone mode. Now, if we head back to the main page, in the upper right, we've got a main volume control. And next to that, we've got a limiter so that you can get a bit more crunch out of your VHS synth. Lastly, we've got a layer mix. And this one allows you to set the balance between layer one and layer two. In the middle, we've got a little display showing you the outputs and also the volume output of each individual layer. Now up here, I want you to watch closely what happens when I switch between the pages. If I go to more and then back, this thing blinks just like it does on an old VCR machine. I think that's a neat little thing they put in there. To the right, you've got an effect called VHS tape. This is like a pitchy wobbly thing. So like an LFO controlling a pitch so you can add dissonance into your sound. But you also have a noise knob so you can add noise to your pitchy wobbly sound. If we go to the row beneath, we've got even more effects. We've got an auto panner, a tremolo, a reverb. And I do think that the reverb here is based off Audio Kit's rack reverb because it sounds just as great and it's got kind of a samey character as that one. Really good choice for this synth. And then lastly, we've got a vintage effect. And this basically works like a bit crusher. So you can get those 8-bit distortions out of it. VHS synth will basically work as a polysynth, so you can play multiple notes at once. However, if you want to turn it into a monosynth with some added glide, all you have to do is to activate this control, and that's what you've got. Now, if we head into the more page, then here is where you actually get to select your sounds. And so we tap up here and we get this list. And there's a bunch of awesome sampled sounds in here. You'll be able to find a lot of typical 80s sounds in here, like FM sounds, but you'll also be able to find interesting sounds such as tape hiss and VCR eject. Once you've selected a sound, you just press done and it's selected in there. And you have two layers you can do this. So you can blend two different sounds or you could use the same sounds, one in each slot and then mix them together for a more interesting and complex sound. 
Okay, so both sound modules have the same type of controls. You got a main volume knob, a semi-note pitch knob. You've also got detuning, which is like fine tuning. And then you've got a panning knob. Both sound modules have a low pass filter with cutoff control and resonance control. And you can link both filters so you can control both with just one set of controls. Lastly, both sound modules have an envelope with attack, decay, sustain, and release. Right, so let's head to the last page, which is FX. Yeah, this synth is all sampled 80s goodness and a bunch of effects. Because on the FX page, we have three more effects and a filter. We've got a phaser to the left here, a stereo delay in the middle, which can be synced to a tempo. And to the right, we've got something called heat. And this basically works like saturation distortion. It can really crunch up your sound. bottom here we've got a harmonic filter with an accompanying ADSR envelope. You turn it on right here and then you've got a cutoff control, resonance, and then you have an amount control and tracking control. Now the tracking control sets keyboard tracking so that the filter gets tracked by the notes you're playing. And the amount controls sets how much of the envelope is being used for the filter. And believe it or not, that's it. That's the entire synth. So straightforward and it sounds amazing. Now, like I said earlier, I did ask Brian about the setup he actually used to sample all of these sounds onto a VHS tape and then back again. And this is what he said. It started for me trying to dig up an old VCR and I thought I would have one around the house and it turns out I did not. So I started going to thrift shops and visited a bunch of those before I even found one because I needed, I needed one that had audio in and audio out. Some of them are just players, so you can't pump any kind of signal into them. And I found a lot of those, but I didn't find too many that were actually recorders. So once I finally got one, I played around with it and it wasn't working too well, so I had to get another one. And I had one VHS tape. I had Gleaming the Cube starring Christian Slater, classic 80s movie. Oh no, maybe it was Pump Up the Volume. It was Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater, which I feel adds some sort of character to the sampling. <laughs> Generally, the way I had it set up was everything was going into my audio interface, into Ableton Live, and then I routed it out of Ableton Live, almost like you would if you were running some kind of external effect or some device, like if you had like a reverb or something, guitar pedals, but I just ran the sound directly into the VCR and then the output of the VCR back into Ableton Live. And I would just hit record on the VCR and just play for a while. So a lot of times it's like recording like C3 and C4, so usually like every octave. But some of the sampling was a little bit different. And once it goes in there, then you record it back into Ableton Live and you get all of that kind of like, all of the problems with the VHS, like the kind of warping, the movement, the push and pull, and just an overall hiss that's on top of everything. 
You know, I love talking with Brian Funk. He's such a, he's he's a good talker because the guy's been running a podcast for like forever and I've listened to it for like forever. And so there's a lot more to the interview I did. However, I'm trying to keep the video short, but there is this one message in this interview I really want to share with you. You see, I asked Brian what he liked best about VHS synth. Well, this is what he said. It's very easy to create your own sounds and presets by just mixing and matching even the different samples on the different layers. So I would encourage people to create your own presets and just click that little save button and, and start developing like your own collection of sounds that you'd like to use. You know, like some key sounds that you would use in some music or some, some pad sounds and have a palette for yourself to work with. And then kind of forget about sound design for a little while. You've already got a few sounds that are gonna be useful to you and then start making music with it. But don't be afraid to save your work. I've done this forever inside of Ableton Live and I have more presets than I can probably ever use. But it's so fun to just open up live and find my own sounds and just know that whatever I'm doing is happening with my own sounds. But I never did that as much on iOS apps. And I just think this app makes it really easy because when you go inside your presets, you've got a favorites that you can star things and a user bank. It's just, it just makes it fun to call up your own sounds because you know you like these sounds and you know that they're going to be useful for something. Now, I've been featuring Brian Funk a lot, but this is also an audio kit project. And so it would not have been possible without Jeff Cooper and Matthew Fetcher from audio kit who are coders. And the graphical design was made by Artem Bilashenko. And the synth looks amazing and it sounds amazing. I just love this project so much. And I hope that the next app that these guys put out will be just as A to Z. Is A to Z a word? Just a question to the audio kit people. Is the synth called VHS synth, VCR wave or VHS synth wave? I'm getting confused here. Now, before I completely round this video up and end everything so dramatic, I just want to say thank you so much, Brian Fung, for doing the interview with me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I also want to thank you viewers for watching this. And before you leave, if you like this type of stuff and if you want to support my work here on YouTube, why don't you give me a thumbs up? The link to the synth is down in the description and also in a pinned comment if you want to grab this thing yourself. Now, if you don't like me, if you hate the sound of my voice, which I find amusing for some reason, huh. then why don't you give me a thumbs down? It's, it's great. You get to give me a token of your inaffection and YouTube sees that there's interaction going on on my video and so it will keep promoting me, which is just, oh, beautiful. If you want to support me in any other ways, then sharing the videos are perfect. You know, that's that's a thing. And if you want to support me in a financial way, check out my music first, a full list of links down below. And if you don't want to check out my music because you think I make shitty music, which is perfectly fine, I'm, I'm okay with that, even though it makes me cry a little bit, then you can always send me a fiver over at PayPal or you could just join up on my Patreon. And I do have an invite link to my Discord down in the description and in the pinned comment. So if you want to join up and chat some music stuff, then do that. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. You know, I guess watching so many old videos on VHS, you get used to the way the tape kind of decays and wears out and it affects the way the music comes out. And that was something I really wanted to capture in some instruments. I wanted to have that feeling of like I'm listening to this song off of a VCR from the 80s.